Hi, Eric. Hi. Which part of Denmark are you? Right now, I am in what is called Jutland. Uh huh. Great. So uh, let me introduce you. Uh, where should I introduce you? I, I, I mean, everybody knows you. So, but then formalities, gentlemen, being a host. Here we go. You're on Dr. M's podcast, and this is the episode 25. Eric T. Hansen. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, yes, Thank you. Yes, and come on my uh, podcast. And it's people like you who had so much of uh, inputs to me personally. I've been learning a lot. A lot of things that I have not. Uh, Learned my 25 years plus, and I'm learning from all of you all. And uh, one thing good is that I'm traveling from America to Europe to Japan, and I meet make friends first of all. And then I come to know what uh, all of you all are up to, and that's a value addition for me. And then I put it down, whatever I learn, I share it with my continuous improvement community globally. That's what Dr. M's uh, podcast is all about. So I'm not, uh, if you look at it, I'm not talking about the implementation part of it. So you can implement the way you want to, whatever uh, tools you want to use. Uh, Six Sigma, Lean, Lean Six Sigma, TPS, DOC. You can use any tool that you want, but how do you uh, sustain that movement? How do you uh, support that? How do you scaffold it and see that it goes from one level to the other, one level to the other, and all the uh, the customers of your client benefits from it. Your, there's the voice of the customer benefits, the voice of the business benefits, and it's towards everybody's welfare and happiness in the end of it. So that's what I want to hear from you, uh, Eric in Denmark and uh, Dr. Mohan in Mumbai, India. So we're going to talk about your lean journey. And uh, I'm sure uh, the entire emphasis is lean works in any settings and in any industry. We'll hear a lot about it from you. And then here you are, you're, you are the operation excellence manager, you were, and now you have uh, moved over to some other organization. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Where are you now? Now I'm at the the the, the former uh, company that I was in, uh, DSP. Mm, okay, that's great. And throughout, uh, how long have you been in this uh, business of lean yeah. continuous improvements? Twenty twenty five plus, I think. <laughs> uh, plus, you forgot, right? Doesn't matter. All of us are in the same boat. And, uh, but then our journey, uh, you're going to tell us more about the journey and I can resonate with most of what you're going to say because I've not heard you before, so I'm going to hear you now. And there you are, Copenhagen, and you're a very curious person, man. Uh, yes. Nothing satisfies you, right? I mean, nope. you are an engineering graduate, production engineer. I don't know what got into you and I said, oh, I got to understand what is supply chain management. So you did your diploma from Copenhagen Business uh, School. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, uh, I mean, it, it is just a sheer curiosity and that works, doesn't it? As a consultant or uh, a person who is curious in this field of lean, you lose yes. your curiosity and then you don't have fun in working. You just, it becomes a routine. But then every day in the Gemba is new for you and you, your eyes pop out to look at things and then enjoy yourself. And you know, that's something good about it. We enjoy Absolutely. our work and we also get paid for it, right? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, so take it away, uh, Eric, on your lead journey and you're on Dr. M's podcast. Let us stop sharing uh, my screen and over to you, over to Denmark with Eric. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it froze, so maybe we should tr oh, try again. Vision. 
Sorry. No. We, we, have, we have to start with the beginning. It always starts with the beginning. That, that's the best place to start. <laughs> <laughs> I always find that. <laughs> mm. uh, well, uh, I want to talk about my lean journey and, um, and I want to talk about the, the road to show that lean works in any setting and in any industry. Um, when I was in, in Nepal, I was trucking around the, the Annapurna. The Annapurna is one of the 8,000 meters uh, of the world. Mm. Uh, and of course, we would meet uh, Nepali people, uh, which is very normal. And especially we would uh, meet the Sherpas and they were carrying, you know, whatever. And of course, uh, as, as um, when we were walking and everything, we were always very anxious to know how far our destination was. Mm -hmm. So we would ask them, so how far is this and this village? Mm -hmm. And the answer would always be, ah, ah, no problem, no problem. Only one hour, only one hour. Mm -hmm. and, and then we would ask them, okay, because of course, I mean, we, 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 we're Scandinavian, so, so or at least Danish, and, and the Danish, the, the Denmark is pretty flat. So, so we're not, you know, accustomed to, to you know, really uh, tough, tough uh, high, high walking and climbing and everything. So we were always kind of anxious, ah, is this going to be hard? Is, is this a lot of climb? Uh, and then they would just say, no, 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 flat, flat, flat. And that the problem is that it wouldn't matter if, if the destination was eight hours away and we had to climb a lot, it would always be the same comment, only mm -hmm. one hour and flat, flat, flat. Mm -hmm. and, and we were kind of, you know, puzzled. So, so why would they say this when it's, it was obviously not so? Mm -hmm. And we were just thinking, maybe they don't know what an hour is, or maybe, maybe because they are so accustomed to, to, uh, to living in the mountains, then they, they think everything is flat. But the explanation was much more simple than that. They, did, they didn't want to discourage us and, uh, and, may, and maybe even make us give up. So they kept mm -hmm. on saying, no, only one hour, one hour, and mm -hmm. flat, flat, flat. And this is, this is the kind of the mindset that you have to have uh, when we're talking about lean and, and uh, making it work and, and uh, implementing improvements. We always have to think in one hour and flat, 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 meaning that we, we don't have to tell uh, the... The, the person that is going to, to, to begin the journey, how, how far the journey is or how big the project is. And this is, wow, this is so big and it's going to take, you know, forever. No, we just have to say, oh, no, no, only one hour. So no, no, it's just no problem. We, we, we just take one step at a time and, you know, bit by bit, uh, we, we get moving. So uh, my career, uh, as, as you also could see from uh, from the from the slides is that it's, it's not been really a straight line. It's not been the, the uh, exemplary uh, uh, lean, lean journey and, and, and lean uh, um, career. Because what, I'm, what I mean by that is uh, very often you would meet people that, that, uh, that have been in lean manufacturing and they've been in different plants or different industries and everything, but it's been in the kind of the same kind of setting uh, but but I have worked, you know, as an external internal consultant in both private companies, semi -pub public companies, and pure public organizations, and even held some uh, managerial positions. But what it all had in common is that I worked with lean thinking, uh, developing, and sometimes even transforming lives and people in the organizations. So when you look at the picture, uh, it shows this winding road and, and this uh, kind of uh, very well depict the, uh, the, uh, the career that, that I've had. Uh, so, so it's not been this kind of, you know, the, the logic one where, where, okay, then I was in the private uh, industry and one in, in a plant, then I should go for the next plant and the next plant and the next plant. No, my, my career has very been <laughs> very much uh, all over. So, um, it begins with yourself. Change begins with yourself. Uh, and when you commit to change and follow through, that is when the real change begins. And this goes for all employees in the organizations. It's just like when, when you're in the gym, uh, you start lifting lighter weights, and then you progress to heavier, heavier, heavier uh, weights, one lift at a time. And as it says in the text, lasting change begins with a commitment to self-improvement. And, and my journey, uh, it started very early uh, when I studied engineering, as uh, you were talking about, uh, Dr. M. Uh, and uh, I read about, you know, just in time, Kanban and Toyota and everything. Uh, but it was only when, when I really 
kind of committed to, to the to the the idea that that lean is really what I I want to work with the rest of my life. Uh, that I, I really got uh, uh, the commitment uh, to, to self develop, and on that journey I um, I, I went through uh, uh, lean leadership uh, training uh, with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Leiker, um, and uh, I really found out how important it is. That, that you have the lean leadership mindset uh, to, to uh, implement and to work with lean uh, and, and make it really work. Uh, and, and one of the things that, um, uh, what were some of the, the, the takeaways you might say for, from, from the training, uh, it, it was kind of the really, the, 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 uh, the, the lean, ship, lean uh, leadership model. And uh, the first phase is that you have to commit to self-development. And if, if you don't commit to self-improvement and self-development, then nothing is going to happen. So this is the first kind of uh, breakthrough you might say I, I had. Uh, and the second one was uh, the, the, the next phase is coach others. And at least when I was thinking about coaching others, I, I was thought, okay, then you really have to be very professional. You have to know everything about, you know, what it is that you're coaching people in. But uh, this model is just kind of almost uh, the, the opposite. Uh, it, it tells you that even though that, that you don't have that much experience, if you're more experienced than the one that you're coaching, then you should begin coaching. And this was interesting. And this was very uh, kind of a breakthrough for me because then I, I understood that it doesn't really matter because I can begin coaching others. Uh, it might be that uh, I don't know everything and I don't know everything about lean. Nobody really does. <laughs> That's another thing. But um, the thing is that when you know things, then you can begin asking the right questions. And then they will begin asking you questions or posing you, you uh, challenges. And then you have to develop yourself. And in this way, you, you, you become a better, better coach. Uh, and the next thing that, that uh, I, I looked at was um, the, uh, um, how could I develop myself even further? And then I went through the uh, Harada training uh, with uh, Norman Bodek. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was through this training uh, that I really I took a life-changing decision, at least for me, and and that was that the lean thinking and uh, and um, and lean leadership uh, this 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 would uh, become my 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 way of life, and it even it became my hobby, and that's why I, I very often say to people uh, that that you might say that either I work all the time or I don't work at all. Because, because I, I, it's very, very uh, seldom that you will not find me doing something that has something to do with lean. Uh, almost everything that I have to do uh, has something to do with lean, and uh, writing articles, and you know, being on this show, and and, and everything. And that's why, when uh, and, and I, I very seldom uh, says no to say, say no to uh, um, an opportunity um, or challenge, and and that's why when when uh, my good new friend. Dr. M, he invited me in, on, on this show. Uh, then, of course, I had to say yes. I, I have to find out, you know, what it is. And and, and I was just, you know, I'm, I'm very honored to be on, on this show. And, and especially when when I think about some of the uh, the, 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 the participants that has been on, on, on this show, then I'm really in, in a very, I'm humbled, humbled and, and a, a very good company, you might say. So that made me thinking kind of, you know, uh, hand say self-reflection. Uh, Okay, then I'm invited on this show, but who, who wants to know about my career? Who who wants to know what, what I what I have have to say? And, and what is why would somebody want to, to listen to my story? And then I found out that uh, as as it says in the beginning, that what, what I have kind of showed in, in through all my career is that that lean really works, and it works in any setting and in any industry. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I created a, a website, which is called Thoughts of the Gemba. Uh, and it tries to show exactly the same. And it does exactly what, what it says. It shows my thoughts from the Gemba. The things that, that I have learned, my experiences, my thoughts, uh, and, and try to, to depict, um, um, you might say, my, my learnings and, and my experiences. Okay. So when we talk about lean and you want to implement lean, then we have to go one improvement at a time. Uh, big improvements more often than not, they don't just happen overnight. It's, it's not kind of, you know, in the eureka moment as, as people they want to, to believe. 
very often they, they happen one improvement at a time, one project at a time, and one development and transformation of a time, um, of a person at a time. So just like uh, John Wooden says, don't look for the big, uh, quick improvements. Seek the small improvements um, one day at a time. And that's the only way it happens. And when it happens, it really lasts. So uh, well, once I was uh, working as a lean manager uh, in a company that produces circuit outlets, and they were missing uh, a method engineer, as it's called. So besides my work as lean, uh, lean manager, I had to work as uh, this kind of uh, method engineer. So uh, I did, as, as I always do, I began roaming the the, uh, the the shop floor and the gemba and and you know uh, trying to find out what is happening and how how the the guys are feeling and and what are they what are their situations what are their challenges and everything and uh, and what I saw is that uh, normally these these kind of these guys uh, they're, they're called sitters they they the 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 finest of their education you might say their training is you know doing changeovers uh, setting up machines and and producing plastic items. And that's what they love. This is what they, they like. And, and they like, you know, uh, optimizing the machines and everything and making it work better and, and perfectly, you know, producing perfect uh, items and everything. But, but what I saw when I was at the Gemba is that they, they were very often uh, on, on, away from the machine. So they were fetching tools. They were fetching uh, coloring for, for, the, for the plastic items. Uh, they were... Uh, fetching uh, control uh, instructions and control items and everything. Uh, and I was just kind of, uh, I just began asking them, isn't, isn't it irritating? Is it annoying? And they said, yes, this is very annoying. But then wouldn't it be great if you could just go, you know, from machine to machine? And then you can just go from setup to setup and you could do what, what you, you love the, the most. And they said, yes. Oh, oh, that would be so great. If that could happen, we would just be so happy. It would be the best. That, uh, yeah, it would just be the, you know, kind of a dream for them. But it says, but that that's not going to happen. So uh, I began, you know, forming a, an idea in, in my head, and I was just thinking, yes. This was a dedicated team, is it? Dedicated team for changeovers. Yes. Yes. Ah. This is a dedicated. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's what they do. They they are setters. They they, they do changeovers. Uh, and then I, I kind of, uh, you know, began forming an idea, you know, of course, I've been, you know, in, in a lot of, you know, kind of challenges. So I was thinking, what about if we invaded, invented a person, you know, a water spider, mm -hmm. a water spider or a service person or whatever you would call it, uh, who, who would um, could fetch the tools. Uh, we would train the per person in, you know, getting the right tools, getting the right instructions and getting everything. So, so what the setter has to do. He would just go from, from one setup to, to the next and all his tools, his instructions, everything would be, be ready for him. Um, and then uh, I, I kind of, you know, puzzled uh, and pondered about this, this idea, but uh, I, was, I, I knew this, this would be extra costs. So I was a bit, you know, reluctant. Is it really a good idea? Uh, and, and then uh, at some seminar or whatever, I, I met a seasoned lean manager uh, and he was in some sort of uh, C-suite uh, position. And, um, and this guy, um, he, he told me, because I, I was, you know, yeah, I don't know how it, how it happened, but we began talking about, you know, uh, uh, molding department. And he, he, had, he had this a big molding department and he was in India. And then he began talking about, uh, I, I explained the idea for, for him. And then he said, this is a very good idea. You have to implement this. We did this in India. And it was great. It was the most crazy efficiency or productivity. It just skyrocketed. And I was just thinking, okay, if he says that, that this is a good idea, of course we have to do it. So I implemented this, uh, this role. Of course, I had to be you know, in, in accordance with, the, with management and everything, but they, they thought it was a good idea. Uh, so, so we did it. And everything, it just worked like a charm. Wow. Except, except for the numbers. Mm. The numbers didn't almost move. So mm -hmm. I was just thinking, okay, this guy told me in India, they got, you know, this, uh, the, the uh, efficiency just skyrocketed, the productivity was great and everything. And where's my productivity? Where's my efficiency? Where is it? Uh, but then, then uh, I, I began, you know, um, digging into to, um, how they were calculating the, uh, the efficiency. Uh, it was calculated on man hours. 
Uh, and, uh, and then I, I dug you know, even deeper, and then I found out that the, the volume uh, products that we had didn't have many man hours. So that, of course, explained that well, nothing happened. But then I was thinking, okay, what we should do is we should use the machine hours. So uh, I, I, I found out that the problem is that it, it, at least for the, at, at that time, it was too difficult for them to use the machine hours. But I got, you know, an, an SAP guy and, and uh, he was, you know, kind of a wizard and everything. So he got all the, the numbers out and we began uh, calculating in the right way. And lo and behold, my numbers came and we got, you know, efficiency skyrocketed and our productivity it went uh, like uh, between 13 and up to 35% uh, on, on, on uh, several months. And, and overall on the year, we made 11%. And we started this, this, uh, this new role, we started kind of uh, in the middle of the year. So it was a, a great success. Yes. What I hear you saying is, I mean, to me, you can correct yes. me if I'm wrong, that whenever you make a change in the Gemba, you have to see that the metrics that you used earlier may not fit into the new process that you have adopted now. So there yes. is, that's what I hear you saying, that the yeah. metrics where you judge, where your intervention or change of process that was adopted, the old metrics is already there in the ERP system needs to be changed. Is that yes. what I'm hearing from you? Yes, exactly. Ah. And, 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 and what, what you're hearing too is that even, even though, you know, I could have said, okay, then it seems it doesn't really help, but everybody could see that it was doing a good, you know, they were changing over, the, the, you know, not, maybe not faster, but at least they were changing over more often because they didn't have to fetch the tools and everything. So of course it has to increase the efficiency, but the numbers just weren't, weren't showing. And I wouldn't accept that. Just as we said, I'm too curious <laughs> and I'm too stubborn. So I, I just had to find out why on earth isn't the, these numbers, why aren't they moving? I, I just couldn't understand it. And then I had to you know, dig into it. And then I found out that, okay, this, this makes sense. Uh, so, so this was, was kind of you know, one improvement you might say. Um, and then we were looking at the, the planning board and the planning board was, uh, was made like, um, it was kind of scheduled for two to three days. So it, it was very hard for the guys to see what do I have to do today and, and, and what, which, what are which of these orders is a priority and everything. Um, uh, and, and even what we had, uh, sometimes we had urgent orders. So, so, so people, they come running and, and they would stop the machines and they would go for the urgent orders and everything. And sometimes there were urgent, urgent orders even. So they were double urgent or whatever. And I was just like, okay, so, so when is this going to stop? I mean, we, we can't keep on having, you know, urgent, 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 urgent orders. So uh, we had to do something about it. And we, uh, we made the, uh, we changed the, uh, the planning board. So it was uh, 24 hours. And uh, we always said that when we, we, uh, we have the 24 hours uh, planned, then we freeze the 24 hours. We're not going to take any, any kind of uh, uh, changes or anything. And, and uh, if they want an urgent order, order, they can get it uh, at the latest to 24 hours or the, or the soonest 24 hours later. And, and of course, when the, the persons, they heard this, then it was of, of course okay with them. Um, and, and what happened is that the, the, uh, the leader, he could go to the planning board and we did this, uh, we kind of um, made colors for each kind of uh, type of order. So if it was just a normal changeover, maybe that would be blue. And then if it was a changeover with uh, plus coloring, then it would be orange and everything. And then they could see which kind of order is it that I'm going to do. And uh, the, the leader could go in and they can say, okay, I can see this order. Uh, it's now 10 o'clock. This order has not been moved. Why hasn't it been moved? And then he could go to the machine, go to the setter and ask, do you have some problems? Can I help? You know, uh, yes, of course. This planning board was in the yeah. Gemba, right? It was in the Gemba, yeah. Ah, that's right. Yes, okay. yes. So that, that, that was their, 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 the management, their, their uh, yeah, management and control board, you might say. Mm. So, so that, that's the way. And, and, and behind each of these, these kind of uh, laminated uh, pages, there was mm -hmm. the order. So, so they would take up the order and they would say, okay, I have to make you know, 10,000 pieces of whatever. And then, then they would go to the, to the machine and 
at the machine. The, the, uh, the mold would be there, the, uh, the control items and the instruction, everything would be there. So they could just go to the work. Um, and then we, we did a SMET as well. Um, we were at the, we were supposed to, to make a changeover in 20 minutes, but sometimes uh, the changeover took like more than 40 minutes. So we made a SMET and, and we agreed with the guys how to, to do the changeovers. Uh, and we even uh, made a, uh, an electronic sheet where they could see uh, how long it took. And if there were any problems, we would do problem solving. Uh, and in this way, we, we make you know, improvement on improvement. Uh, and in, the, in, in this process, um, I had the, the, the thinking of the guys transformed, uh, kind of, you know, talking to them and how do you feel now and everything. And, and uh, wording is just like, uh, I really love the way that, that our work kind of flows uh, and, and uh, everything is so visual. And we can concentrate on what we really love going from machine to machine, making the changeovers. That was very, very common. And, and everybody was, was uh, thinking that this was a great success. Mm. When we talk about, uh, about uh, lean and, and, and making it really work and stick in an organization, people, and especially the leaders, they have to see the light. Mm. And the way that they see the lean light, as I call it, is they have to feel and experience the effect of lean in the reality mm. on the Gemba. Mm. So um, in, in the food industry, um, uh, I was kind of trying to, to make the, uh, the technical staff see that we just should, shouldn't, you know, go in, in uh, on, on, uh, yeah, on the line and then begin, you know, um, increasing the speed and, and uh, increasing or the, the pressure or whatever. Uh, but we had to, you know, to kind of stand still, uh, watch what is happening, find out, you know, uh, what, what kind of, uh, is, is there any problems, find out the root cause and, and uh, really get the, the, the go look see, you might say, to, to see what is really happening on, on the Gemba um, and, and kind of, you know, general assessments. So one day I'm, I'm standing at, at a line uh, and I'm with the, uh, the maintenance manager. And uh, we have some, some problems with the uh, capsule machine. Uh, but the line is lower than, than the speed that, than it's supposed to be. So, of course, uh, this guy, he cannot stand still. So he, he runs in and then he begins, you know, uh, increasing the pressure, increasing the, the, the speed of the, uh, the line and everything. And it seems like it works. So I'm just asking him to, to, to please don't do anything more. Just, you know, stay and, and look and see if this, this did the trick. But then he discovers, ah, no, 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 the speed is not good enough. So mm -hmm. I have to increase the speed. Mm -hmm. So he goes in again, increases the speed. And what happens? Capsules and bottles and everything is, is almost kind of flying, you know, around, around our ears. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so it didn't really do anything good. So he had to, to run in again. And then he uh, decreased the, 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 the speed, uh, lowered it again. And then, okay, then the line was kind of working. And then I, you know, I was looking at him and say, okay, now do you see why it is that I always say that you have to understand the situation. You have to not just, not, not just barge in and, and, and solve all the problem, but understand root cause and, and understand the, uh, the, the gimba before you, you begin uh, moving around and, 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 you know, trying to save the day again. Uh, and he said, yes, I, I understand. Uh, I, I understand what you're saying. And I, and I agree, we have to do, I have to do it like this. And uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, today uh, he has committed to, to learn, well, he says everything about lean. Wow. And as I said, that, that's a lot, that's a lot. But he really wants to learn lean and uh, he's very keen to, on learning it. And, uh, and, I, and he has agreed to, uh, to me um, coaching him. So, uh, so he is really moving, and he knows he's really on, on his his lean, uh, journey. Uh, and and this is uh, this is what I mean by seeing the light. He saw the light because he did something that you know he did the thing that he usually does. But somebody, which was me, told him, "Do you see what what uh, what effect, what consequences it had that you do what you normally do?" And mm -hmm. do you agree that you know you have to do something different than you normally do? Mm -hmm. And then of course he said yes. And this is what I'm talking about when I say transforming one person at a time, because mm -hmm. I got him on the lean journey. Because before he he, he always said that he wanted to, to learn lean, but you know, just like everybody else, he didn't have time. No, 
I don't have time. I don't have time. That, that's the that's a normal, you know, the, the explanation. I don't have time. So, uh, but now he has time, and he really, really wants it. I like the seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Yes, exactly. And you have to experience it. And this is what he did. Mm. He saw the bottles and the capsules almost flying around his ears. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Okay, I think maybe I have to do something different. Mm. That's interesting. Yes, and we have to mean business. We have mm. to really, we have to, we commit to self-improvement or development, and we see the light that this is what makes up the source for accountability and responsibility. Mm. Uh, but if you really want Lean to work and make it stick, you have to mean business and show it. And the attitude is just like it says in, in the, the photo. The attitude is, yes, we can. Mm. Of course we can. We mm. just have to find out how. Mm. So we need Lean leaders. If you want to make Lean um, work, you have to have lean leaders. Mm -hmm. It is important for me to say that a lean leader doesn't necessarily have to be a leader. It can be just a person that, you know, takes up the, the torch and says, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to do these improvements. I want to improve this place. But a lean leader has to show and hold the lean light as this is shows in, in mm. the picture. And he needs to live by the five building stones, which is Kaizen, which is improvements by everyone every day. Mm -hmm. He needs to challenge. He needs to challenge his people and his organization mm -hmm. by setting up stretch targets. He needs to show respect mm -hmm. by supporting and coaching his people. Mm -hmm. um, he needs uh, to, to work in team, so nobody is standing alone with uh, with a challenge. So everything is a team effort and accomplishment. And then he needs to go to the gemba. As I always say, the truth is at the gemba. The mm. truth is where the, the is at the place where value is created, mm. and I, this is something that I always say. If, if somebody says that I don't understand this, have you gone to the Gemba? Have you have you seen this for yourself? No, but but I know how it was. You know, uh, two years ago when, when when I was working at the shop floor. Yes, but that was two years ago. Please go to the Gemba and see what is really happening. So good, so good. I like what you said in this. Uh, the challenge sets target. Stress yes. target is in no way uh, disrespect for people. Actually, they become more curious and more curious. And my experience yes. has been when there is a very thin line between success and failure, and you make it, it's you enjoy yourself. Yes, exactly. You know, like uh, you go on your knees and you're not very really sure whether the, the lady in front is going to accept your proposal. <laughs> and she says, yes. Will you marry me? And she says, yes, there's a very thin line. And then he said, whoa, sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. That's no, but the, you're right. That, that yes. is a thin line of stress target. You had to, yeah. That's... Yes. And even exactly. if you don't meet the stress target, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, nope. you have to, no, no. you learn from it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And this is, this is what it, it's really all about. It is, you, you put up the, the, the target. Of course, it has to be reachable. But mm. you put up the target, and then they, they they really stretch themselves. They don't just you know uh, move a dial or whatever, and then okay, then we got the ten percent. No, you have to get the fifty percent, sixty, seventy percent, and okay, you, I only got sixty percent. Yes, but that's very good. If if I had told you that you would get ten percent, maybe you would get ten percent, or maybe eight. So it's it's very good that that uh, that that you work, and, and so you have to put the stretch targets up, and yes, then challenge okay. people. Yeah, sounds like Sherpa. One hour, one hour, flat, flat, flat. One hour, one hour, flat, flat, flat. flat. I, love I love this. Yes, exactly. I love this. <laughs> so to talk about the, the lean leader, uh, when I was in, uh, in a municipal organization, then this guy, he came up to me and uh, he asked if, if I was working with lean and if I was responsible for implementing lean in the organization. I told him, yes, I am. And then he invited me uh, for coffee. And then we uh, we discussed how can we get lean working in his organization. He had like uh, 50, 40 or 50 uh, people uh, employed, which was taking care of uh, emptying public dustbins, moving lawns, cleaning playgrounds, etc. And he showed himself to have the, the really right attitude and mindset. Uh, and he already knew the uh, in which direction he wanted his people to go. So uh, we started with a few of his guys, uh, and, and they got on my my what I call 
green belt uh, training. Um, and, uh, and we began meeting up and implementing uh, different kinds of, of initiatives. So we standardized the, uh, the equipment each truck uh, should carry. Uh, a, a problem that, that uh, we, we saw or that, that, uh, um, that I discovered was that sometimes, you know, uh, because uh, another team, they, they, they needed a shovel, then they would take the shovel from, from, from one truck. And if the guys, they didn't uh, check it, then they would have to go back to, to get, you know, a shovel. And these kind of, you know, very, very simple things, but still very annoying because yeah. that would take 10, 20 minutes, half an hour if the traffic was bad. And then they had, you know, to go back, <laughs> and then they had to work and everything. So, so we we set up this uh, this stand up, and, and this is the stand up kit for 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 a truck, um, which we we uh, made some some checks for for each truck for uh, for driving safety, uh, and we implemented Kamishibai, you know, the red cream carts for power tools to make sure that they were clean and they they were operational, so that they wouldn't go out, you know, with a power tool and then it wouldn't work. And then and this had a great effect. Uh, and we created uh, an environment of, of challenging each other uh, and striving to, to reach difficult targets. But the, the leader, he kept on challenging his organization and he wanted the rest of the organization on board as well. So um, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we made some, some, um, some workshops um, and where we uh, and some training where the participants they they had to t uh, tell and talk uh, to each other about which kind of challenges they had and and they identify um, muda or, or waste uh, in in the um, or the non value adding activities in everyday uh, work life. We even made some videos uh, with the green belt guys, and and uh, and then they uh, invited some of the the other people and asked, "Don't you want to be in this video?" And and the the funny thing is that they they uh, um, these guys they make the videos by themselves so mm -hmm. so i would i, I would uh, when it was you know uh, uh, clipped and, and uh, cut and everything i i would see it uh, the, the videos otherwise i wouldn't see it so so what i did is uh, i kind of i saw some things that i wanted to to uh, to kind of um, make sure that the, the, these these points are, uh, are in in the uh, you might in, in the video but the rest it was kind of up to them i i kind of I show, I, I make the, um, uh, how could you say, the story, uh, the storyboard, but then they, it was up to them if, if they wanted, you know, kind of, you know, invent uh, sentences or whatever. I just, there was some, some certain points I said, you have to say this or you have to, because th this is very important. And, and this is some some points that, that I want to make sure that everybody understands. So it was very funny and, and everybody, they laughed and everything, but it always it all, um, also made them think so, so they, they, these the situations where you know from from everyday life, just like with the shovel or you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, the, the, there was this problem uh, sometimes that, um, that 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 they didn't have enough to, to do. So when they finished their work, then they would go home, and maybe they would go home one hour before they they, they were supposed to, and and, uh, and 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 this is what what we would kind of you know exaggerate it in this. I, I I don't remember what I called the the city, but it was kind of you know like exaggeration bill or something like that mm. so so uh, so it was you know everybody knew that this is this is exaggerated this is this is too much but they would still you know, recognize the, the problems so uh, what we came up with was uh, a big list of actions and then they began uh, improving all these things so uh, one of the actions uh, that we came up with was uh, they they discovered that um, sometimes the uh, they would um, they would sweep uh, a path, kind of, you know, a bicycling path or whatever. Uh, and then the day after, the guys who moved the lawn, they would come along. And the result would be that uh, there would be gravel and stones and everything on the path. Uh, and of course, this was very annoying for the citizens. Then they sat down and say, this is, this is not very lean. This is not very lean. We have to talk about this. And then they identified the, the areas where this were, were happening. And uh, then they, they uh, agreed that, okay, so when, when, uh, when you're going to, to move the lawn, then tell us because then the day after or the same day, a, a little later, we will come and we will sweep the, um, the, the path. And, and this is the way that, uh, that, that the, you might say that this, the lean leader, he kept on challenging his, his organization. And, and in fact, uh, the implementation of lean in that department became a role model for, for, for the, the rest of the organization. 
and then everybody would uh, would go to them and, and see how they were, were working with Berlin. And this would not have been happen uh, if it would not have been for that that uh, leaner, uh, leader that really has shown up to be a, a real lean leader. Inspiring, inspiring, inspiring. Yeah. Mm. Yes. You have to make a Kaizen structure, just like I told you, you know, with the improvement, uh, uh, after improvement, you should make a Kaizen structure. So the Kaizen, Kaizen should be like kind of like the brick building, as, as you see here, mm. uh, one brick at a time on top of each other. Mm. Uh, and it creates a strong building that, that cannot be easily broken down, but it can be built stronger, wider and taller all the time. And this Kaizen structure uh, uh, an improvement culture keeps getting stronger all the time. Hmm. Just like when you when you look at the picture, you see the the uh, the white kind of the white um, uh, the, the white stones um, uh, above, and, and this is you know the new kaisens you might say that, oh. that's that's coming. The one behind. The other one behind, yes. Uh -huh. That's the new yeah. ones. Yeah. Those, those are the new ones. Yes, exactly. And this is the way it should be. And maybe yeah. they, they are not perfect or anything, but then that's, that's by bit they, they yeah. exactly you can you can build upon them. Um, so and in the same uh, municipal organization, um, I had some green belts and, and they, they wanted to, uh, they, they had a project and they wanted to reduce the lead time for handling applications for, um, for building public, uh, public housings. And this is a very complex and time consuming process. Uh, but uh, we gathered a team of uh, 10 to 15 employees and we made the map the, the current state one day and the next day we made you know the future state and then we uh, we made an action plan and then we began implementing and we you know we, we removed double checks where people they were double checking you know one document after the, uh, the other uh, we created some standard documents because nothing was really you know standard so so everybody kind of invented their own standard uh, and then we made some fast lanes for the app applicants uh, that had all the, the figures and all the, the data correct. Uh, and we even made uh, some workshops with the, the customers, the, the applicants, and, um, and made some amazing improvements, uh, which was agreed with the customers. And it had a great, great uh, effect on the application process and the lead time for it. And we reduced the lead time by 60%. So, uh, so the leader of, of that department was very happy and pleased, uh, and, and he saw that this this he began believing in it and saw the benefits uh, of, of lean, and he began believing in it. So he also began challenging his people, because he had this morning meeting, and he was kind of getting tired of this morning meeting because it wasn't working. And he, he uh, it took like forever. And he didn't really, you know, know what was happening on, on the projects and he didn't have any overview and he was more confused than, than, than kind of <laughs> informed. So uh, he, he posed a challenge and uh, he, he said that uh, I, want, I want a new kind of meeting and I want to be informed and I want to know what I need to know. And I want it visual. I want a visual uh, overview and I want to... to I want a very good discussion, um, and 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 this is my challenge to you guys. So they kind of, how oh, how are we going to do that? Uh, but they got together, and then they they began, you know, dis discussing uh, different models and you know experimenting a bit and everything. But then they came up with the idea: why don't we just take you know a big map of Copenhagen, and then we just put you know pins in, pins in the in the places where we have the uh, the projects. For the for the public housings, so he can see where it is, uh, and we will put on you know sp small uh, signs so mm -hmm. he can see what it is, mm -hmm. and, um, and and uh, we will make you know a board uh, at the side so he can he can see what is the progress, uh, red green uh, yellow, um, on on the uh, on the cost uh, on the resources and on progress, on the projects, and uh, when they. We implemented everything, and then we did some, you know, uh, some 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 tests and everything, you know, test runs just between ourselves. And then we were ready to present it for the uh, the leader, and he was absolutely thr thrilled. Mm. And the morning meetings became so much better. And even what happened is that the, because everybody it, it, it uh, went faster, and it was only the information that was necessary that was discussed. Mm. So so you would hear. Um, people talk like, uh, okay, we have this problem and I can't really get, you know, further with this. Then somebody will say, ah, hey, 
I've done this before, or this project that, that I did, you know, uh, one year ago or whatever. It kind of resembles this. Let's take a talk after this, and then we, 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 I will talk to you, and, and, and maybe we can discuss some ideas that you can use. And it was just so great. And 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 uh, what really happened because the the uh, the leader saw the light, and he began believing in lean and, and working with it, and and working with the 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 lean leadership, um, yeah, the model. It, it, what really happened is that there saw more and more improvements, uh, and we were and he was building this kind of great uh, Kaizen wall in his department. Lovely. Mm -hmm. One thing that I see over and over and over again, and this is one of the things that I think is very important, uh, also when you when you want to get uh, lean working and you want it just to, to 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 be sustained, is follow up and celebration. So to make sure that the improvements uh, are working, you need to follow up and you have to improve using the PDCA thinking. And then by all means, celebrate. Mm. The amount, it could be whatever, it could be the amount of improvements, it could be the results that the improvements has created. It could be the happiness that the improvement has created. It doesn't matter, but you just have to, to, to celebrate. So uh, when I was in, in the, uh, the railways, um, we, we, uh, we had a project uh, where we were looking at what we call the false per mileage. And if, if you know uh, the mean time between failure uh, on a machine, where you look at, at uh, how often the, the machine breaks down, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, more than three minutes or whatever, then it's almost the same. Uh, it's just called in the railways uh, industry, it's called mean, mean distance between failure. So you look at the distance and how many failures there were, and then you, you have the mileage per failure. What is failure? How do you define failure in this? Uh, just my curiosity. It's, it's, yes, no, no. This is in fact a bit funny because a failure is a stop lasting longer than three minutes. So if you have a delay that is more than three minutes, then you have a failure. Delay where? To reach the station or? Uh... Yeah, on the, yeah, on the station, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, can I understand that? So suppose there's a train that comes to me in Mumbai and yeah. it is supposed to be at nine o'clock. It should yes. come before three minutes, not yes. on or before three minutes. Am I understanding you right? Yes, this, 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 the, let's say that, it, that uh, you're supposed to take the train at nine o'clock. Uh -huh. uh, then then, then the, in fact, the train should be there, you know, uh, 8.57, because then, then you have time, you know, to get the passengers aboard. And then at nine o'clock, you should leave. But oh. the, tr the train arrives 904, then it's a failure. Okay. okay. Then, then you have a delay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the arrival of the train at the platform. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Okay, okay. Okay. I yeah. understand yeah. that. Sorry for that uh, interruption. I just wanted. I, I no, no, enjoying, no I'm enjoying what you're saying, so I'm totally engrossed. Yes. Oh, no, that's very good. That's very good. Um, so when we began working, you know, with the shop floor management and, and coaching the leaders um, in the maintenance, the, this, this MDBF, this mean distance between failure, it was uh, like half the target, what it was, was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, but we worked with the leaders and uh, we implemented morning meetings, coordination meetings between the shop and the operations. We put in a st standard service. Mm -hmm. uh, visual boards showing where the people should work. Mm -hmm. We even even put in some some kitted uh, components uh, to the point of usage, so so uh, that they didn't have to go anywhere. They should just stay at the you know the train, and then they could get the, the components and they could could change them, and a lot of other lean tools and principles. Mm -hmm. We also implemented um, process confirmation uh, process where each leader would follow a particular sheet. And then they would check out uh, this, uh, check off this uh, this sheet uh, when they have done that process in uh, confirmations. And if there were any deviations, then they, we would go uh, um, beginning a problem solving process uh, to get back uh, on track. Mm -hmm. um, and then at a certain point of time in the project, uh, we reached the target. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, well, it, it it depends on on what the, who the leader is, but. In, in other places, it could be that you'd say, okay, great, you reached the target, uh, congratulations, and bye-bye. And then we just move on. But this, uh, this particular leader, um, he got uh, special built uh, cakes uh, and drinks for everybody to celebrate. And then he held a speech praising all the employees uh, and all the work that had been done. 
and this was uh, for 200 people, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this is he, he celebrated this, and uh, and he made everybody understand that that we have reached this target, and this is your effort, this is your doing that we reached this target, and and, and uh, I'm grateful that that we we reached this target. And that is something that is not very easily forgotten. And everybody, you know, they remember uh, what happens. And later, the same leader, he celebrated another target where it reached. And then he ordered a hot dog stand. Uh, so everybody got hot dogs and, and, uh, and, and drinks. Uh, and, and, we, and they enjoyed it. Um, and I think the, the most important lesson uh, that I have learned and, and what I always preach is don't just, you know, give people, you know, drinks or cakes or whatever, but celebrate something. Do it because you celebrate something. There's always something that you can celebrate. It, it should never be, become, you know, a custom that you just, uh, okay, we always get cakes, you know, on, on, the, on, on, on our meetings or whatever. No, when you have your meeting, and even it doesn't matter if, if you, uh, you know, give cakes uh, uh, every meeting, just make sure that you are celebrating something. Uh, like uh, we have made, you know, 20% of our improvements, 50% of our improvements. Now it's 75 of our improvement or whatever. It doesn't matter. So each each milestone, each milestone you start celebrating, each yes. completion, reaching a milestone, or uh, even if it is plus minus, doesn't matter. But if there is a yeah. progress, yeah. you celebrate for that. So exactly. there is a reason for celebration, right? Have yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. This is very important because otherwise you would see uh, people, you know, get food or, or, or you know, kind of a, a party or whatever. But this is a very, very good um, um, chance to, to, to celebrate and say, we have this party, but because we reached this or because you did this well or because, you know, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. And then, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to say that, that, uh, that the train is still running. And, uh, and and now it, it's it's running between 130 and up to 160 percent of the target. Oh. So it's it has really 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 improved a lot. Uh, and in fact, I saw saw uh, uh, that they, they reached even even higher, uh, 200 percent, I think 300 percent. Mm -hmm. So so it, it's really it has really really had a, a great effect. And then. I think the, the one another thing is, is uh, important is to use the concept of nimawashi. When, when you have a kind of you know a big thing, or when you work with visions, or, or, or and, and you want to, to introduce something new, you, you should use the concept of nimawashi. And the idea of the nimawashi is that you prepare and acclimatize the soil before you move a tree. I did the opposite, and uh, the, <laughs> the result was not good. I just moved, you know, I, I, I dug a hole uh, and, and I just put a, a tree, you know, in it and it died. So, so I have, I've learned <laughs> the lesson, you know, like on the gimba. Uh, so I know that, yes, this is a very good idea, you know, to prepare and acclimatize the soil. And this is a change management strategy that makes larger changes much easier. But you have to listen and take into account other people's input and thinking and then take the decisions, in, the decisions into account but you really have to take them into account. So when I'm working on a project uh, or a job or whatever, uh, I often use a mixture of the nimawashi and visioning. Uh, for instance, when I was in, in the molding department, I kept talking to the guys, uh, as, as probably as, as maybe you remember, uh, wouldn't it be great that, you know, you could go from, from setup to setup and you wouldn't have all these, you know, non-value adding activities, you wouldn't waste your time and, and, uh, and you would do what you really love. And, and, and uh, yes, this is what they, they, they wanted. So um, I kept on talking about, you know, the... Um, how, how could a uh, possible for solution and, 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 but also what the changes would be. So, so I, I didn't just, you know, give them the, the dream, but I also t uh, told them that, okay, but this, this dream has a cost. You will have to do some things. We will have to make some, some changes. So I was already, you know, kind of preparing and acclimatizing them and preparing them for the changes that we were going to That's do. Nima Mashi in the head, right? Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Really. Yes. 
And this is what, what I'm talking about is, you know, no. yeah. you have to, to, to listen to them, the input and the thinking because they came up with some very, very good ideas. Mm. And, 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 and uh, what I, I took these ideas and then I, you know, I worked with them and, and improved them and, 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 and maybe changed them or whatever. But, but uh, I listened to them and, and they saw that these, these changes were, were, were made. Wow. Um, so, so uh, and, and this is the same thing uh, when I was in, in the railways. Um, but you know, uh, yes, you, you know, thoughts of the Gemba, and, and I am a Gemba guy. And I'm just, you know, I'm just a, a guy working in the trenches, you might say, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with, with Lean and, and another Gemba. Uh, and um, when when I was in the railways, uh, the, the first thing that I, that I saw is, is kind of these people. They were they were kind of uh, in, embarrassed, and and, um, and and they they had very low self esteem. Uh, working on, on this train because it, it wasn't performing very well and it this was really a problem for them. Uh, so I began uh, talking to the guys and I complimented them on the great work that they that they were doing uh, under very very difficult conditions and I told them that they they should be be proud of, of the work they're doing uh, and uh, that we're going to change this negative story uh, and so so we, we that they are going to be proud uh, to work on the train. And then I began talking uh, to them about, you know, what, what, if, uh, what if we reach this target? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, now, now we have the half of, of the target. So, so would, wouldn't you just feel proud and, and great if, if we, we reached the target? And uh, if you had, you know, uh, a standardized uh, workplace and everything, and everybody was saying, oh, yes, this would be very great. Um, and in this way, um, we, uh, we, me and, and, and the leader of, of that area, we changed the story. And we made it a great place to work in, uh, because we kept on talking to them, and they 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 they, they began believing in, in the in the story. They began believing this can, this can be. These people they care, they 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 understand what we're talking about. They understand our situation, but they want to change it uh, and they want to improve it. Very good, very nice. So the attitude that you have to have when you work with lean and and uh, and sustaining the the, the the improvements is it is possible. Uh, I have, I've never had any uh, Japanese uh, senseis. Everybody has, you know, uh, stories about uh, the way that that, uh, that the Japanese they they they, they say things with a, with a lot of wisdom. Uh, I had French sensei uh, senseis, uh, and when one of my senseis uh, he had said in you know in, in the way that the French say uh, uh, yeah, talk uh, in, in English, and he said, "Say me not no because, but say me yes if," and. This is, we have to have a positive attitude towards problems uh, and, and thinking that anything is possible, sky's the limit and we can do it. And this is something that I even, you know, talk to people about, especially when I train people, when they begin, you know, ah, yes, yes, Eric, that would be very good if we could do that. But no, don't tell me no because, tell me yes, if, and then they say, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, we can do it. Uh, if this and that, and say, okay, what do we have to change to make that happen? Mm. And then, of course, this is this is changing the the uh, the mindset from uh, uh, negative thinking to positive thinking. Yes, I like this. Yes, if and then that yes. gives you an opportunity. Yes, if gives you an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so when people they begin to you know say, no, no, that's not uh, not not possible because and they say no. Don't don't tell me that. No, no. <laughs> I just always remember this and say, and it's no. Tell me yes if, and then of course they can say okay. Then they have to think, okay, if we really want this to work, what do we have to change? Mm. And then we begin, you know, the change process, mm. and we're even doing a kind of a little a little uh, washi because we we are kind of preparing the soil. Okay, if we want this change, what has to change? And then they begin talking about the, the, the changes or the improvements. I like this, I like this. Yeah. So as I told you, uh, I use the washing and I use visioning. And this is one of my absolute favorite uh, quotes uh, about visioning. And it's from this guy, Antoine de saint Esprit, And uh, he's the guy who, uh, who wrote The Little Prince. The Little Prince. Uh, he, yes. He was uh, uh, an air pilot from, uh, I think it was in the second or the first First World War or something like, like that. But he made this, uh, this quote, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work 
but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. And this is what I try to do. I try to teach people to long for, for the vision, for the, the, the possible future that, that I'm talking about, just like with the molding guys, just like with the railway guys and everything. So again, when I was in the railway industry, um, we had a lot of initiatives that, that uh, um, we had to implement um, to, to reach the, the, the target of the, the MDBF um, and, and uh, in, in the service part of the maintenance shop. So together with the, the leader of the service department, uh, we agreed that we wanted to create a vision, visioning session uh, with the shop floor guys. Shop floor guys. So uh, we created a whole story showing you know, um, how we started up, um, how they performed at the moment, which gaps there were, uh, and, and uh, then we showed them a vision. The leader, he drew up you know, uh, a, a sketch where, the, um, where there was a train on the railroad tracks and, and uh, between the, the on, on, on the way to the station, which would be the goal, then you had these kind of signposts and it would say kind of, you know, uh, standardized service checks, or it would say, you know, uh, new technical system or whatever, kind of different things. Uh, and, and this is the way that we just kind of showed that the train is going to move through all these signposts. And then we're going to reach the goal which is moving you know, for the MTBF target. And then we even um, uh, drew up some, some, uh, some values, 10 values um, for the department that we wanted to, uh, the, the guys to, to live by. So we showed them uh, a possible future of working in a standardized way, reaching their targets and working in a workshop where it was fun to be. Uh, and when the visioning session was over, the shop for glass, they were full of hope uh, and, and, and some even commented, commented that, that this, is, this is going to be so great and, and this was, it's going to be so much fun and, and we're going to be so happy to, to, to be working in this place. Um, and the day after, the, uh, the guys, they could see the, uh, the drawing at the, uh, the huddle board and the, the leader would point at it and he would talk about it and, and, and very often he would uh, explain what it was and everything. And then sometimes there were, were some guys and, and you know, uh, they would maybe not really follow the values, then he would just uh, pull them up to the board and he would say, look at these values. Okay, and his kind of guys kind of looking at the values. Okay, this value, I don't know, uh, uh, respect the others, for instance. Um, do you think that's what you did uh, when, when you just, you know, threw the tool down or, or whatever it was? Uh, and then he would say, ah, no, 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 no. But, but I just, you know, yeah, I just get, get, got a bit annoyed, but I can see that. And then I, I, I'll change this, this behavior. So in, in, in that way, um, all the guys, they, they, uh, they have the opportunity to even come up with other values or more values. Uh, and, or if they didn't, then we would say, okay, then we agree that you agree on these values. And that's what they did on the session. So, so they, they couldn't go and say and say, ah, but I don't agree with these values, but you were there. You, you could have said that I don't agree with, you know, I don't want to show respect for people or, or whatever it could be, you know, I don't want to be happy at work always. So I don't know something. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this is, uh, this is, a. Uh, was a very very great session and and everybody they was was ha so happy uh, after after that uh, and 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 we could always you know say okay so look at this okay now now we have you know passed the, the first signpost now we're going to the second the signpost etc cetera, etc cetera. and now we're going to to reach the target and finally we did reach the target yeah and then we celebrate and then we celebrate and that's what we did so nice, exactly nice great. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, yeah, this is my my uh, my presentation. So so we, we, just to sum it up, we, yeah. we need the, the 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 lean leaders. We need to, to prepare the, the 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 people for the changes, and we we need to uh, use visioning to make it happen. And then when we're talking about the sustain the sustainment part, it's you know follow up and it's celebration. Just you know, he always celebrate and, and build the Kaizen wall all the time, improvement by improvement, and transforming person by person. We could say that the, these guys on, on the shop floor, I was talking to you know each individual, and in this way, I was transforming uh, them as well, yes. believing in, in this vision and believing you know this this can, this can really happen. Yep, can. Yes, we can. We can. We can. Yes, exactly. 
wanna wanna flat 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 <laughs> we can let me see your face so I mean, yes yes exactly exactly this is this is the one yeah one hour one hour no 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 one hour one hour flat 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 flat, flat. <laughs> so we can end our episode by saying that if you can uh, stop sharing then well, both of us are going to say one hour one hour flat 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 i love exactly <laughs> So let's say one one hour flat flat. Come on, Eric. One hour, one hour flat. <laughs> one hour. Yeah. But this is the way it was. It was kind of no, 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 not not long. No, 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 not long. One hour, one hour. I said a flat flat, 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 flat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs>